This strange green diagram actually solves this strange probability problem via some strange techniques in real analysis. But what is this probability problem? Start with the numbers from 0 to 1 and choose two random numbers that lie in between them. Take their ratio and round it off to the smallest integer. In this case, that would be the number 1. Choose another two numbers and you might get the number 2 instead, or the number 3, or even the number 0. What we are interested in is finding the probability that this number after rounding off is an odd number. So for example, in this particular setup, we do not have an odd number. But in this setup, we obtain the number 51, which is an odd number. What is the probability that the ratio after rounding off to the smallest integer is an odd number? We can run the simulation and try this out with many many different possible random choices of x and y. As we let the process keep on going, we're going to obtain a probability that seems to approximate 0.327. But this is just an empirical experiment. How do we know the exact probability for sure? Pause this video if you'd like to try this out for yourself, and when you're ready, unpause for the solution. Let's first decode what happens when we round it off to the smaller integer. What happens when this equals the odd number 1? Well, this situation happens precisely when the ratio x over y is not smaller than 1, and strictly smaller than 2. To make things a little bit easier, we are going to take the reciprocal on all sides. This gives us a lower bound of a half and an upper bound of 1 over 1. Multiplying the x up on all sides since it's non-negative, we get an expression involving x's and y's. We can plot this on the xy plane. This means that we can draw a line passing through the origin with gradient 1 as well as the line passing through the origin with gradient half. This inequality tells us that we accept the pairs of x's and y's that lie inside this triangle. But what happens when we consider the rounded off value to equal 3? Then we're going to draw the lines with gradient a third and gradient a quarter respectively and accept all the pairs of x and y that lie in this rather small triangle. But this works when the integer part is 5, 7, so on and so forth. The total probability therefore equals the total area of these infinitely many triangles. Let's call this probability P and try to ask what is its area. The first triangle has a base 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 and height 1. Therefore, the area there is a half times the base times the height. In this case, the height is 1, so we can just omit that. But the area of the second triangle is half times a third minus a quarter. The following triangle is a half times a fifth minus a sixth. So on and so forth, we actually get this infinite sum of fractions where the plus and minus signs alternate. Does this infinite series converge? Let's try to plot it out on the graph and plot up each portion of the graph bit by bit. As we progress along this series, we're going to plot the corresponding sum on the graph. Because of the plus and minus signs, these points are going to alternate from being above, followed by below.
these points are going to be added in a zigzag manner up and down, up and down, up and down, so on and so forth. And they seem to be closing in on some particular number. In fact, these points are sort of enveloped by these two curves, which does close in on a particular number. Let's call this number S. By the way, this really does converge according to what we call the alternating series test. For a proof that this works, check out the document in the description box below. So now we know that the series does converge, but can we know what it converges to? Pause the video if you'd like to try this out for yourself, and when you're ready, unpause for the solution. For reasons that would become more apparent later on, we're going to consider the sum of the first two n terms. And we are going to write this sum in a slightly more different way. The number 1 is simply the number 1. There are no real surprises there. But the number negative of a half could be thought of as a half subtracted by 1. Now 1 over 3 is just 1 over 3, but negative of 1 over 4 can be thought of as 1 over 4 minus 1 over 2. And the negative of 1 over 6 can be thought of as 1 over 6 subtracted by 1 over 3. We can keep on going on and on and on. And something interesting happens. The green sum is the sum of the first two n harmonic numbers, while the red terms that we are subtracting are actually the first n harmonic numbers. This means that the sum of the first two n terms is really a difference of harmonic sums. But what is this difference and how actually do we make sense of it? In the diagram below, the harmonic sum simply refers to the total area of the rectangles. The area under the graph is given by a logarithm, which means that the excess space is given by the harmonic sum subtracted by the corresponding logarithm. This expression can be continued in order to obtain h sub n, which is the nth harmonic series, subtracted by the logarithm of n. We're going to call this sequence gamma subscript n. We can actually show that this sequence of numbers converges to the decimal 0 0.577, so on and so forth. Let's write this as gamma sub n plus the logarithm of n equals h sub n. Let's substitute h sub 2 n with this expression as well as h sub n. Now we can split up the logarithm of a product into a sum of logarithms. We can cancel out the logarithms to obtain log of 2 plus gamma sub 2n minus gamma sub n. As we let n approach infinity, the log of 2 just stays as the log of 2. But the gamma sub 2n approaches gamma, and the gamma sub n approaches gamma as well. As sub 2n approaches s, since that's what it means when we take n to infinity, and the gammas cancel out, this tells us that s equals the log of 2. But piecing together the pieces of the puzzle, the required probability is half times the log of 2, which approximates 0 0.346, which is not too far off from our experimental value of 0 0.327. For another problem using a real analysis to solve, click on the video here.